Hey everyone, welcome back to the Microwave Lab. This video is going to be about building your own RF sampler to view your radio output on an oscilloscope. And this is a reshoot of an old video that I did. Uh, not that old, but uh, I realized some of, my, some of my math was a little bit off and uh, I want to uh, update the hardware a little bit. So this is the first RF sampler board that I built. Um, we have a SM... these are... Um, Oh, what would you call it? Ed edge mount SMA connectors, uh, and this is a similar board I'm going to use in the new one. It's just a copper-backed FR4, and I've got uh, edge mount or edge launch SMAs and um, input, output, and the sample uh, sampler here. And we're using a resistive voltage divider to sample the signal and a dummy load hooked up over here, which is just a resistor bank. Uh, so the idea with this is you can't hook up your radio directly to an oscilloscope or most measurement equipment because it outputs too much power for the for the equipment to handle so you need to pluck off a little bit of a little sample of the signal in order to uh, to measure it so right now I have the uh, signal generator set up over here 27 megahertz and we're, we're, we have one volt RMS and we're measuring over here on the oscilloscope um, RMS value is 23.6 thereabouts uh, millivolts and so that coincides with what I, uh, this is just the test I did when I made the board. Uh, the sample voltage is 23.5 times 10 to the negative 3 times Vn. So you can do the math on that, and it, it works out with the, uh, the input versus the output. So that ratio isn't terribly important as long as you know what it is, and then you can, you can backtrack and calculate what your, uh, what your radio output is. And this assumes uh, 50 ohm matching because in uh, the oscilloscope, there's a f we have to imagine a 50 ohm resistor in parallel with this 1k ohm here. And so these are, is a 1k, a 1k, and another 1k, and so we have a just a voltage divider here. I'll assume that uh, you know what a voltage divider is, or you can go read about it if you don't, but it's not critical. Um, like I said, the values, the value here and the values here aren't super critical. Um, you just have to know what they are, and you can, you can calculate. So um, what I'm going to do is build a new one here, and I wanted to... Uh, this is good for... These are quarter-watt resistors, and so... Um, you can calculate power through a resistor by V squared over R, and so the voltage, you can uh, crunch the numbers and figure out if your radio is putting out X amount of power, the voltage will be this much, and that voltage across here will resu result in a certain amount of power through the resistors, and so I wanted to, I wanted to essentially beef this up to, to handle more power, so this would be good. I have a uh, P in max here, 20 watts continuous, so if you wanted to put in, if you were putting in a little bit more power just in a burst to make a measurement, that would be fine, uh, but the power has to be dissipated as heat, so if that's, if you have more than 20 watts continuously, there will be more than a quarter watt over each of these quarter watt resistors, and that's uh, grounds for uh, the resistors to fail or something could melt, so uh, we want to keep it under that uh, threshold, so I want to build a, a more substantial one, and I'm using, I have a one, this one mag ohm resistor here that's going to be the uh, uh, the equivalent of this resistor here, and I just added that first as my anchor, and I have a whole bunch of these 510 ohm uh, quarter watt resistors, and the idea is that we're going to use a whole bunch of them in place of just these, um, and we're going to set them up in series, and the idea is that we're going to have an equivalent resistance of about, it'll be about 10k ohms with a Let's see, I think I'm going to use about 20 of them, so it'll be uh, yeah, 20 times 500, or it's 510, so a little over 10K. Um, we're going to have 10K ohms, which I could just use one 10K ohm resistor, but by using a whole bunch of little resistors, we can, that, um, in those resistors in series will each take a small chunk of the voltage, and therefore the power dissipated by each resistor will be less, so that's uh, how we can achieve a much higher um, uh, a power handling of the sampler. So... Um, my idea, it's going to be about, be able to handle about a thousand watts continuously and um, uh, probably about two thousand in, uh, in burst. Uh, that's just a guess, but a uh, thousand watts will have just about a quarter watt on these resistors, so that would be a continuous discharge or a continuous running um, safe limit. And above there, you could do it, like I said, you could do it in short bursts as long as you, um, as long as you have a way to keep it cool, maybe put a fan on it or something and uh, just keep an eye on the, on the whole thing. So I'm just going to come over here to multi-sim really quickly to show to show what I'm talking about here and so I set up this this network here the, all the the 510 ohm resistors and uh, we're putting out right here I have uh, 316 volts which is the equivalent of two kilowatts in um, in uh, for uh, radio power reference to 50 ohms and so we have the whole the whole bunch of uh, 510 ohm resistors and we're measuring just under 500 milliwatts, so that's obviously double the rated power of these, but that's, you know, a very, a very high-end uh, 
peak, I would say, about double, and just using some uh, some, some dead reckoning. Uh, and so here's the one one mega ohm uh, resistor at the bottom there, and then the 50 ohm in parallel that rep with the multimeter that represents the oscilloscope. And so we're measuring uh, one and a half volts there. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to change this value here to um, let's see one. What's the number? Two, yeah, 223 volts is one kilowatt. So I'll run that, and we'll uh, we'll we'll check out the power here. So now you can see the power across. These are all going to be equivalent because they're in series. I'm just measuring one of them. So power across this one the uh, resistor and transitively all of them is 241 milliwatts. So that's just below uh, a quarter watt. So that means that for a continuous running, we can go about uh, about one kilowatt or a thousand watts. So that's uh, that's the gist of it. And the other the other thing to remember is uh, let's see at a thousand watts, we're going to read. Um, about a volt, and um, and so the other the other wild card here is the maximum reading that your uh, oscilloscope can take when it's a 50 ohm attached uh, 50 ohms, and the oscilloscope I'm using is has a five volt maximum, so we're we're well under that. So you, the, you know the the values aren't critical, but you do have to sort of tailor them to your uh, to your equipment. Uh, and if I can remember um, the voltage for Let's see, one watt is, uh, which would be about probably about the lowest you'd measure in a rate, and you'd want to measure in a radio, at least with an oscilloscope for most practical applications. So one watt would be it's about seven volts. Uh, so we'll run that, and we're going to measure. It's about okay. It's pretty. It's small. It's about uh, 34 millivolts. And the, the the probably the last consideration is you don't want this number to be too small because then you'll start to reach the noise floor of the oscilloscope, and that can make your readings uh, inconsistent. So. Um, but if we if we want to figure out what the ratio is from uh, out from the sample to the input, what we can do is we can just put in an, a simple number like one, and we'll uh, we'll run it, and we'll get 4.878. So that's 4.878 times 10 to the negative three times the input is what the output is. So that's how you would calculate to backtrack your um, your uh, input voltage, and then you can calculate your radio power. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I don't really need to show the whole process here, soldering all these resistors. Uh, I might cut a few out, and that will uh, that'll change the numbers a little bit as far as power handling and the the ratio for the sampling. But uh, we'll see if I can fit all these res resistors on this board, and, and I'll uh, we'll uh, test it out really quickly and show you the result. All right, so we're back here with the uh, resistor network all soldered in, and that was quite the soldering venture, but it was kind of fun, and uh, I like soldering, so no big deal, but uh, the only other thing I did was move this one mega ohm resistor over to, to the other side here, uh, and, and so I connected this to the oscilloscope, and I wasn't really getting the values that I, I anticipated. If you remember earlier, we had a, a one volt input yielded uh, about 4.8 or 4.9 millivolt output, um, and that's, I, I was just running multi-sim over here again, and that... Um, that confirmed that, but on the oscilloscope, I was only getting about three millivolt output, and so I hooked it up to the network analyzer to get a get an idea of what was going on, and we're actually getting just about that. It's about two point seven milli. We have mil, milli units, so that's just gain. That's two point seven times ten to the negative three times the input. Uh, so same, same, only different. But uh, we're looking at the if we're looking at the frequency domain measurements here, you can see we have a a lot of losses. Frequency increases. I have about. I think 500 kilohertz on the bottom here, and then at the top is 100 megahertz, and a marker here at, um, or a 50 megahertz at the top, rather, and a marker at 27 megahertz, and that's where we're getting the measurement of, uh, of, uh, 2.7 milli, so, uh, my only explanation for that is with these through-hole resistors, they're not really built for radio frequencies, uh, we have some built-up inductance from that huge network, and probably some, uh, some coupling going on, something screwy, so, uh, Maybe I bit off a little bit more than I could chew with this. Uh, bit off more than than the circuit could chew with these with these uh, component these components that aren't really built for this. So I think I might go back and uh, modify the circuit a little bit. Maybe replace these with one uh, k ohm resistors instead. That way there are fewer of th fewer of them, and so we'll have less inductive loss. And then we'll uh, we'll measure again and see if we can get. Uh, yeah, I, I won't have the um, power handling I wanted, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see if we can make it work. Uh, more uh, I may build a more substantial one than I had earlier. So here's the final iteration, a lot less extravagant than the uh, original one. I just have uh, three 1K resistors, and then the one mega ohm resistor stayed there, and we're getting a very a result very close to what we, what the model predicts. So I'm just have to change this value here. We're looking for just one volt, and we'll run that, and we've got. 
about 16.4 milli. And if we come over here to the network analyzer, we're getting about 16.3. So I can live with that. And now I know the exact number, so I'll just mark that down. But um, yeah, so this didn't, uh, the power handling is nowhere near what it was with my grand scheme of the uh, dividing the voltage among all those resistors. But I think what was going on is we, we have a whole bunch of parts that have no business in, in an RF environment with these through hole resistors. They're just not built for those higher frequencies. So the inductances kind of add up and, and that looks like a uh, an open circuit to higher frequencies so that's what that's why we we're getting such terrible results earlier on but uh, I did want to show that that didn't work so uh, you know you guys can uh, learn from that and not not attempt it yourself soldering 20 resistors together uh, if I had some if I had surface mount resistors uh, and a, I could make my own custom printed circuit board and uh, put those on there it would work a lot better but at that point I would just buy an RF sampler that's why I'm I'm trying to do this on the cheap with these with these components that you might have laying around just because uh, if you're gonna spend thirty dollars on components you could just go buy an RF sampler for uh, probably about the same price so uh, just uh, you know not not what I wanted not with the the high power but it's still uh, it'll still handle a little bit more power than the other one that's because of this big one meg ohm uh, resistor because uh, we're limiting the current coming into here and that'll protect our, uh, you know, it's connected to the network analyzer right now, but this would be the sample port. This is where our oscilloscope is, so we want to we want a low amount of current, low amount of power coming in. That'll uh, pr help protect our oscilloscope so we can measure a higher power. And if you blow out these resistors, then uh, you know, what are you going to do? You can replace them, but having this big one meg ohm as the anchor, that'll help help protect the oscilloscope. So wanted to show the, the failure a little bit there, but also that, uh, uh, my theory was confirmed by cutting down on the number of components. We cut down on that some of that parasitic inductance, or uh, maybe not parasitic is the right word, but non-ideal inductance, and uh, and it worked a lot better. So uh, that's all for now, and hopefully you guys can put one of these together yourself and uh, and learn from my mistakes, and hopefully it'll work well. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.